shit. Okay. A little tip to all the kitties out there. J j just never get in a fucking car crash, all right? That that shit will rattle your goddamn bones. I feel like since last time I got rained upon before a recording session, life had to, you know, sort of up the antes a little bit. Oh boy, it sure does suck to be rained on before I'm about to record. I, ho I hope I don't look like a retard. <laughs> Bro, you think that's bad? Fucking watch this shit. And I get fucking impaled by a goddamn car antenna or some shit. Hey everybody, x here, back with more evidence that Danny DeVito is an absolute unit. Today on this episode of this Platinum Shit Show, I'm gonna do something somewhat unusual and actually critique the various YouTube personalities that have inspired me throughout the course of this series on YouTube. Mostly because I, I just thought it'd be a, a fucking neat idea. I mean, fuck, why not? Instead of going over content and genres that don't necessarily have any direct impact on my channel, why don't we subvert that a little bit and, and tie a nice little knot on everything by, by making a small mini-series dedicated to all those fuckers out there in Nam, who I, I personally hold, hold a lot of respect for. In this short little series, I'm gonna be uh, going over some channels that I've plucked out of the basket to represent an upcoming genre on YouTube, that being a new wave of rant channels. And just giving my own analysis and critique on these channels. Things are doing well, things they can improve on, their high points, their low points, all that juicy shit. And just to clarify, this by no means is going to be a, a, a bitter review of any of these people. This is just going to be a nice and fair review of this community and how far these personalities have developed within the last year. So with that out of the way, let's talk about why all these channels are actually fucking garbage. <laughs> To begin off this series, let us first talk about both the most popular of these channels and the most controversial. Turkey Tom is kinda at the centerpiece of this new upcoming wave of rant channels. He's gotten a shout out by Quentin Reviews, he's constantly collaborating with other YouTubers, and he's just gaining an impressive amount of subscribers every day. It seems as if he's really trying to go that extra mile to improve his content after each video, and that's something that I personally can only describe as incredibly admirable as well as proving that he does have passion for the content he, he produces on a regular basis. But there are plenty of issues to be had within certain crevices of his videos. Let's start that off today by talking about his editing. x you just dedicated an entire 20 minute video to this shit. Can you, I don't know, maybe get the fuck on with it? My issues with his editing isn't actually the editing itself, but rather the intentions behind his editing. And I'm not trying to imply he's doing anything malevolent here. I mean, he's just a fucking YouTuber after all. What the hell's he gonna do? Uh, sp spread E. coli to the fucking food supply or some shit? Regardless, a lot of my own grievances when it comes to his editing comes from his Mr. Inner Indiegogo video in which he states, And I think to be a good or at least entertaining YouTuber, you need to at least have good editing or a good personality. My personality is alright, but I acknowledge that it is somewhat lacking, which is why I edit the shit out of my videos, or at least try to make them visually appealing, because I find it necessary to maintain an audience, and I think it makes my content more respectable, honestly. Now, granted, his editing is actually pretty solid, and I completely understand where he's coming from when he says this, but the problem is, this is just flat out incorrect. Mm. This is an issue because it implies that his editing is a substitute or a coping mechanism for his lacking personality, as he so puts it. In reality, all aspects of content creation should play off of each other to give a good idea of the overall message you're attempting to convey. What I mean by this is that instead of favoring one aspect of your video creation over all others, it's important to make sure that all aspects of your content coincide to make a clean and, and fresh product that feels more professional and more respectable as a result. Instead of favoring editing over your personality or message, think of them as equals. Because honestly, what the fuck even is good editing if, if there's nothing to go alongside it? It is true that you need decent editing to look more respectable as a YouTuber, but the idea that you can use these different tools as a way to 
fill in the gaps just isn't a very appealing concept if you actually spend time making sure that each piece of the puzzle that is your video clicks together to better represent the idea you're trying to showcase through said video. And as a YouTuber who's constantly making rant videos, you need to show a better understanding of your greatest strength because, as I've already discussed in my last video, your editing acts as a tool to talk to your audience directly. The less you understand your own practices, the less coherent your voice will come across to your fans. And this is actually something that I'd argue Tom has had difficulty with before. That being just having an incoherent and somewhat jumbled message. Admittedly though, it isn't primarily because he doesn't understand the full importance of his own editing, but rather due to the way he manages his content and formats his arguments. Which leads me into my second point, the lack of balance or flow. If you actually pay attention to everything surrounding Tom, you'll actually notice that he's attracted an anti-fan base. There's a pretty decent amount of people who have made rant videos on the Jimmy John denying number 4 Turkey Tom himself. And throughout a lot of these videos, you'll often see people arguing against his personality, claiming that the biggest issue of his own videos is his dry, sarcastic, and exaggerated identity, and how blunt he can be when trying to tackle subject matters and other creators while simultaneously playing it off as constructive criticism. And while it's perfectly okay to dislike his personality on the basis of it just not appealing to you, I feel like the idea that his personality ruins his arguments is more complex than what most people make it out to be. You see, people like to put the blame on Turkey Tom's personality because it's the easiest thing to blame. And while, yeah, it isn't the most pleasant personality on the platform, the much bigger issue is the balancing of Turkey's personality versus intellectual honesty and fair critique. What I mean by this is that most successful YouTubers have the ability to know when to use their personality for a joke or to bluntly say an opinion, and when to set their own personality aside to speak in the more factual sides of their arguments so that they have actual substance to their claims. And yeah, this is just simply another piece of their personality, but it's a piece that can state objective fact or constructive criticism. Don't believe me? Just look at the Plinkett reviews on YouTube. He has the personality of a fucking sociopathic murderer who kidnaps girls and feeds them the flesh-eating cockroaches. And eat the greatest reviews this site has ever seen. What I'm getting at here is that all good YouTubers are capable of presenting different sides of their personality to present a more clear idea of what they're trying to say with their video. If you're just staying your ideas bluntly the entire video and you're not taking that extra step to look further than beyond the surface level of a topic, then as a result, you will not only look less professional, which kind of renders the whole purpose of your editing capabilities useless, but you will grow an anti-fan base dedicated to just picking you to shreds and destroying your reputation in the process. And I'm in no way suggesting that you can't have a blunt way of conveying your message. I mean, just look at channels like I Hate Everything, Your Movies Suck, or even Ralph the Movie Maker. All of these channels are super direct about what they like and what they dislike. But even then, they still know how to balance out the different faces of their personalities. That's why they're so respected in the YouTube community. Because even though they are straightforward and voice themselves in an obvious manner, they have the capabilities to set that aside for a moment to provide context, to explain why something doesn't work, and to actually build on ideas and faults that surround the topic they're discussing. Now before I continue on, it's important to acknowledge that Tom is capable of giving fair critique to some of these topics he talks about. Whenever he is actually focused on said critique, he's able to bring in a lot of really valid and interesting points, and these types of videos are probably my favorites that he has to offer. But like Otherwise, he also has had difficulty in the past with breaking away from his dry, sarcastic humor sometimes. And honestly, it makes some of these videos... Well, well, well just, just really hard to watch. Ah, good. A weird, lonely, socially inept man is going to be explaining what it is like to grow up like a little girl. Well, I guess their interest in My Little Pony and dating prepubescent boys will be one thing in common. I have a feeling that Enter's idea of a thank you video was him stripping down nude and sending people pictures of his little Johnny to the kids who pay money to see his show. Make sure you lock your doors, kids, or John might come in and show you his erect atrocity. For someone who has never made an animation his entire life and has never shown that he is capable of <laughs> producing one piece of good writing, either from his reviews, his atrocious book, or his somewhat pedophilic show concept. I feel like this is Enter sort of projecting, telling his audience preemptively that he's a creep or a person of some kind before he gets outed for it by someone else. I mean, not saying he is necessarily, even though he has done some rather pedophilic illustrations in the past, but just some good do it. really, 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 really,
I do not hate. Thankfully, this has been a trend that he seemed to have broken away from more and more recently, but still accumulated into easily his worst video yet, his Digibro video. A video which I'm gonna use as an example for multiple occasions to illustrate my points, not because it's one of the few instances he's messed up in a major way, trust me, he's had plenty of those, but because it's the most massive and colossal piece of shit that's on his channel, if I'm speaking honestly here for a second. In this 16 minute long video, Tom spends an overwhelming amount of time painting Digibro as a pedophile and then takes the word of some fucking Randy on a lolcow site who claims to have lived with Digibro during one point in his life, and takes it as fact based off of the evidence that this dude docks Digibro's address. It's possible that all the stuff said during that segment was true, but whenever you're making such huge accusations about one guy, you should automatically know that there's more research required than just taking the word of some fucking random stranger on the internet. Because when you do that, it looks like you're manipulating certain talking points to fit your own narrative of the video. And besides, people are smarter than that anyways, you're, you're not gonna fool them by just taking the word of some fucking George on, on the internet or some shit. Already, there are a lot of things wrong with this video that I could go over, one of which being the fact that it's a video that paints itself as a critique of Digibro's channel rather than what it actually is, which is just a personal attack on his lolicon fetishes, calling him a pedophile with no factual evidence to back it up, and then making him out to be a degenerate with, once again, no factual evidence involved. But after seeing all of this material and analyzing it, I have come to one conclusion. Digibro is a blatant narcissist who treats everything as being subjective so that he cannot be critiqued for his actions, he discourages free speech, and all while making thousands of dollars a month criticizing TV shows for being mediocre, when his own channel is ironically, unbearably bland, unoriginal, and anything but special. But since that's not entirely related to the ultimate issue I was discussing with Turkey Tom's content, I'll state the importance of this video in, in this brief statement. It is by far the greatest example to date on his channel of letting his own personality interfere to such a degree where it obscures intellectual honesty and fair critique, which is the whole point that I was talking about earlier. And while overall I'm very glad that within recent weeks he's done this less and less, it's still something that he absolutely has to be careful on. It is very easily the worst part of his content and affects how people perceive his intentions as a YouTuber. He's sort of apologized for some aspects of his Digibro and Mr. Inner video, which I'll get into here later, and that's cool and all, but the fact that he didn't fully realize or understand all the things he was saying while he was typing it out into a script format is still somewhat alarming because it shows a level of unawareness within his own content. And this is probably the basis from which he gets a lot of his hypocrisy from, because there is a lot of hypocrisy that's been said throughout his videos that I don't feel the need to go over in this video because I I'm, I'm trying to go over big picture shit here. Uh, that and also the fact that other people have already gone over it, but we're, we're just gonna look over that fact real quick because you know, you pay attention to me, I'm the big boy here. Finally, before I kind of wrap up this video, I want to dive into the last issue I have with Turkey Tom, also known as the lack of context he provides sometimes. There's actually three different phases to this part, so, uh, you know, you just gotta bear with me here. Two of which involving the Digipro video, so, you know, just, I, it's gonna get really fucking tiring fast but I'll explain myself here, so just stick around, folks. In the meantime, however, the first phase in which I'm going to be discussing is context being the whole speechy criticism controversy. Now, because this was something that came back to bite Tom in the ass in a much bigger way, I'm fairly certain that Tom has kind of learned from this whole scenario, and because of that, I don't really want to focus on it too much, since it kind of feels overplayed, but still worth discussing somewhat, because it acts as a great transition into my point. In a nutshell, Turkey Tom was caught to have been directly lying to his audience by claiming he was banned off of Speechy's Discord for no reason whatsoever, whenever in his own video there's a split frame before it transitions away that clearly shows him breaking server rules and harassing Speechy. This was bad because it once again gives off the impression that he's willing to manipulate facts and evidence for his own narrative. I mean, I'm not gonna call him out on anything, I'm not gonna call him a definitive name because I honestly don't know if this was intentional or if he was just truly that unaware of his own doings within the community. I mean, I know that sounds like fence sitting, but I, for fuck's sake, this dude has proven that he's been just completely unaware of his content before, so it's entirely possible that that was just a result of that. Either ways though, like I said, it eventually came back to bite him in the ass, and there have been plenty of other people to discuss on it, but I feel no need to preach a lesson in which he's already aware of. Just know that this is very much a dangerous game you're playing when you do stuff like that, and if you are truly that unaware of your own claims, 
then I'd suggest taking the time to actually consider what you're talking about. No content creator, no matter what content they make, should ever be that unaware of the type of stuff they're saying. The second half of understanding his issues with providing proper context comes from his Digibro video. Thankfully, for this particular point I'm about to make, I've only ever seen him do this once, so it's less of a criticism and more of advice for if you ever come across this in the future. Nonetheless, in Digibro's video, he fails to provide the proper context in more than one way, but for now, we're just going to be talking about how he handles channels from a target demographic that he doesn't appeal to. I bring this up while talking about context because in the Digibro video, he fails to fully acknowledge the fact that he isn't even within the range for the target demographic for the genre that Digibro resides under. He mentions in the beginning how he doesn't really like anime much to begin with, but doesn't do anything useful with that information aside from following it up with the phrase, it's abundantly clear and so on. A lot of people who have complained about this instance of his videos have said that it isn't fair to critique a channel who isn't based in the community that you don't already like. But I, for one, don't take much liking to that statement. I, I believe you can critique everything on the face of the goddamn planet, it just depends how you do it. There are a couple ways to go through with critiquing a channel that's stationed in a community that you don't care for. And I know I'm not hot shit or anything, but my last two videos are based around me critiquing a genre or set of YouTubers that I don't even fucking care for. And even then, I still believe that they're some of the best videos I've ever made. And hey, people seem to like it too, as opposed to getting mixed reviews overall. So what I'm saying is, listen to me, I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm basically a professional after all. The first way Tom could have pulled off tackling Digibro was to openly state his biases against the community, but to actually do more than just state that he has an opinion. Use your biases to bring up an important piece to your video that helps illustrate why the YouTuber in question is flawed. It makes a YouTuber look especially bad whenever their flaws are so apparent that they exceed even the standards of the community it resides in. You could have easily painted that picture to make an argument for why Digibro doesn't work from an objective standpoint. But of course, that would also mean you'd have to, um... You'd have to actually talk about their content as opposed to just making baseless personal attacks on a person themselves. Simply admitting that you don't like the community already and then moving on with no further elaboration just makes you look less credible. And that can destroy your entire video within the introduction alone. Provide weight and substance to your claims. Spend some time to build up these arguments so that the payoff feels satisfying. Another way to go about handling a YouTuber who you have a bias towards is just to flat out be objective. Believe it or not, people enjoy YouTubers who are capable of giving objective and honest thoughts to a subject matter. Trust me. I know. I got this one comment from this fucking Randy on the internet, and, and that basically means I'm right and you're not, dumbass. People often find appreciation in a content creator who is able to do extra amount of research and is capable of digging below the surface level to come to an honest conclusion. And that's typically because these people don't want to feel like they just wasted their fucking time. Believe it or not, when people click on these videos, they don't want to just waste their fucking 20 minutes on watching some random kid babble on to themselves about arguments that hold no discussion or meaning. The ability to set your opinions aside for a second is for sure a hard thing to truly master, as everyone has strong opinions and feelings towards something. Uh, it's it's human nature to be very opinionated. I, I fucking get it. It's not even a bad thing either, but like my argument earlier, you gotta know when to balance out the different aspects of your personality. When do you choose to show your bluntness? When do you choose to establish meaning to these arguments by just stepping back and talking from a neutral perspective? When do you choose to throw in a joke? How do you execute that said joke? These are all factors that need to be considered when making a video. Once again, this is only an issue that only really pertains to this specific video, so this is more of advice for future instances and it is a consistent problem. But what is a more consistent problem is the lack of evidence throughout his videos. Finally, we've reached my third point of my personal issues within this sub-saga on how he mishandles context. No, it isn't potentially manipulative like his speechy part, nor is it a failure to use your, your own assets to your advantages to strengthen your argument. This is simply just failing to establish certain YouTubers or personalities ahead of time before arguing against them. Once more, I will yet again use the goddamn Digibro video primarily, but just to spice it up a little bit, why don't we throw his Kavos video into the mix, make, make a nice little uh, make a nice little fucking blend there. Just to prove that this isn't the only instance he's refused to provide the proper context to something. In this video, he claims that Kavos doesn't do any research or does a very poor amount, and he does actually supply us with one instance of context 
but one instance of context shouldn't be enough to make your case. You of all people should know that it's entirely possible to have outlier videos, the videos you'll release every now and then, that just, they, they don't hold the candle quite as well as your other videos. And while Kavos probably doesn't do enough research, I wouldn't know because I don't watch Kavos. It's still a possibility that this one instance is the black sheep, in order to supply your viewers with an actual argument, you need more evidence than just one specific instance. And I know that that might sound somewhat hypocritical of me to say because during a lot of this video I've targeted his Digibro video, but I don't see that as an outlier as much as I do just an accumulation of Tom's worst assets. In all honesty, Tom constantly showcases a side of his personality. It's just that in his other videos in which he does show the uglier side of his arguments, he's still able to make some sort of claim by the end of the video unrelated to his baseless ones, that kind of balance it out in a very, uh, very dysfunctional manner. To me, it never got so bad up until that video in particular, so that's, that's, that explains why I'm using that video so much. Hell, just to prove that I'm not nitpicking to fit my own narrative, let's bring up some examples of him showcasing the more bitter half of his content. It's like his Mr. Inner video where he's constantly making jokes about Inner being a pedophile without making it obvious enough that it's it's just he's just simply fucking joking. Or yet again, another Mr. Inner video where he states, And despite what you may think from the title and my track record discussing this creature, I do not intend to further the bandwagon in any way during this video or create lots of unnecessary hate or drama in this creature. <laughs> or how he constantly has the tendency to call a channel dog shit, or say he despises it, or say it's the worst on the platform, for getting into anything else regarding the channel. This is an issue that Turkey Tom has always had. All I did was provide more examples to showcase that this has always been an aspect of his personality. Just trying to prove my point here. Just trying to provide context. Speaking of providing context, let's redirect back to Tom's lack of providing context by beating this dead horse for one last time. Thank goddamn Christ too, because I myself am honestly really fucking tired of talking about it. What Tom will usually do is insult the channel first thing and then dive into why he believes that to be the case. And while I'm not the biggest fan of this tactic of introducing your videos, usually it still works, so my arguments against it can only really work within a subjective space. But with his Digibro video, he doesn't really provide much else in the way of context after the insults come in. He talks about Digibro being a My Little Pony YouTuber, talks about how creepy that is, and, and, and just going further to throw insults at him, which for the time being during this video means nothing unless you're already aware of Digibro's content because he doesn't really show any clips for these jokes to be grounded in any sort of reality. He then goes into Digibro's transitions into an anime reviewer and provides a brief summary of why Tom doesn't like these reviews. The issue here is that this brief summary of his content is what this video should have been because this summary could have been elaborated upon way more with the proper context and with the proper context, could help inform your viewership on the many flaws that this YouTuber holds. That would have been a way more engaging video than the actual video we got. It's like if I start off this video by saying, Turkey Tom's videos are alright, but, but he doesn't provide context, doesn't have a great way to balance out his personality all too well, just overall makes weak points. And then proceed to dedicate the rest of my video to trashing on Tom because he isn't actually a turkey like what his name conveys. Man. Wouldn't that be dumb? Wouldn't that just waste your fucking time? I mean, it, it would be a funny meme, but the thing is, this video, it, <laughs> it ain't no meme. And honestly, it seems as if he still struggles with providing context from time to time. Although granted, it's never been that bad. So thankfully, we, you know, we have that as a positive. Kind of a bittersweet positive, but you know, it still works. The most recent instance I could find being his initial Storytime Animators video. But this is by far a much more tame example of this happening, and it's understandable. In a nutshell, he quickly gives off his feelings on the genre itself, one of his complaints being the personality gap in which nearly all YouTubers within this genre claim to have social anxiety or something similar, but have such bubbly and charismatic personalities. I don't find issue with the claim itself, it's more of just not showing clips to back it up, but it's a far lighter example because that wasn't exactly the focus of the video to begin with. Still could've used some context, but you know, it's reasonable. He'll occasionally make some more mistakes like this where he'll make a claim about somebody but won't provide the clip he's referring to specifically. And honestly, I, I still do hold him to this fault, but likewise it's something that I acknowledge I need to work on too, because it's an issue that I suffer from as well from time to time. And on top of that, these are mostly just bits and pieces of his videos as opposed to the video in its entirety. He does have some bad ones which just completely 
you know, fail to provide context. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly mention those in a second. But for the most part, it's, um, it's not too bad. I don't feel like it's nearly as big of an issue as everyone makes it out to be sometimes. But it's still something to be wary about just so you don't make larger mistakes in the future. He's fucked up pretty big, like, like three times recently. So you, you gotta really take that aspect of content creation into consideration whenever you make you know, whenever you start your next video project. Just some advice to both Tom and myself, unless you're citing a specific instance, whenever you're making a general claim, it's important to cite what exactly you're referring to, because it can establish a connection between the creator and their audience. Whenever you've made your viewers go out of the way to do the research themselves, Instead of just providing the evidence in your own video, it means you've failed to create an argument with depth outside of the people who are already aware of these issues. And if the only people you're appealing to are, are people who are already aware of these issues, then what's the point of making these videos in the first place? By that point, you're just preaching to the choir. Now before I end off this marathon of a video, let us actually look into the more positive side of Tom's content. Because it wouldn't be an in-depth look if we didn't assess both sides of his videos. Whenever Tom is actually making a video discussing a topic in which he actually knows what the fuck he's talking about, he's able to nail the coffin on the head. Some of these videos are really great and is why I've been following his content for a while now. Storytime Animator Strike Back, 50k subspecial, how to destroy any YouTuber, and even his latest video, the Bobby Burns video, are all examples of great videos on his channel that act as a result of him just showing a good understanding of what he's talking about. And once again, like I've stated earlier, his content is constantly improving within every video he puts out. So it's possible that these criticisms won't even be relevant if you just give him some more time. Now, granted, him forming his personality at such a young age has led to, uh, to a lot of his older videos becoming very uh, dated, especially in a large emphasis on the yelling for no real reason. But now I absolutely despise it. Haha, <laughs> he passed you already. Shut up, kid, you're stupid. Are you actually retarded? But now I think he's actually started to find his footing as a content creator, and I'm glad to see him growing and developing his videos in a much more professional manner than what it used to be. I think a lot of the flaws I mentioned could easily be ironed out by just taking some more time and thinking about what your true goal is by the end of the video. If at any point in your videos you feel as if this goal isn't being accomplished or isn't being developed enough, reconsider your approach to the situation as a whole. Will this take more time? Does it require more research and revision? Absolutely. But in the end, what matters is the quality of the product, not the quantity. People would much rather have a book that uses the time to build up and carefully construct arguments that hold weight and merit to them than a video that just, just makes frail and void arguments that don't have much depth or complexity to them. Like I said earlier, people don't like to feel as if they've wasted their time. They want to learn something new within each one of these videos, so hell, why not give it to them? Would I recommend Turkey Tom's content? Absolutely. As long as he continues to go that extra mile to make sure his content comes out clean and polished, then I believe that Tom deserves the traction he's able to afford. Which I'm fairly certain he will. I, I mean, if there's anything he can take, it's criticism, which I widely respect. So hopefully he's able to take this video and use it as a means to further the quality of his own videos. But for now, this is your friendly neighborhood cocksocket here, telling you to take back Jerusalem and have a nice night. Good night, children of America.